Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, we're gonna be talking about 15 things I wish I knew before I started playing the game. These are gonna be great tips and tricks if you're a beginner and even if you are consider yourself more of a veteran since you've been playing for the last eight or so days, hopefully you can find a couple of these things at least new to you. Anyways, let's jump into this and let's get it started today. Number one, did you know that if you are hunting something and it happens to go in a body of water, you can actually lasso it out? So I was hunting some deer last night. I was trying to craft an, an upgrade and uh, I needed perfect deer pelts. And I was in this area where there was like these rivers and streams and the deers kept hopping across the river. And a lot of times they would stop to drink water and my only shot would be when they were in the water. Now, if you kill an animal in the water, it is going to be taken by the flow of the river. And that's exactly what started happening. So obviously you're not gonna be able to pick up the carcass or skin it while it's floating in the water. So what you have to do is actually lasso it out, which is kind of difficult to do because if you have auto aim on it, it's not gonna auto aim on something that isn't alive. So you do kind of have to like aim it yourself and you do kind of have to like throw it like a, a normal lasso, like if you're trying to lasso a horse and it's pretty simple. You can just lasso it to shore and from there you can do whatever you want. You can pick up the carcass, you can skin the animal to get the pelts and that's exactly what I had to do on multiple different occasions because like I said, these deer kept going in and out of the water and sometimes the best shot was when they were stopped in the middle uh, in order to take a drink or something along those lines. So that right there is pretty helpful. Hopefully this will allow you to go after animals even if they're in water. And number two, if you do, you won't lose your prized three-star carcass or pelt or anything like that. So that's incredibly helpful. I can't tell you how many times before this I had, you know, maybe, you know, hunted an animal in the water. But because it had just started, you know, rolling away, I just left it. So I wish I had known about this a long time ago. This next tip is useful if you're staying a long time in stores. Even though a store might say it closes at midnight, if you stay inside of the store, it will always remain open. So I figured this out the other day when I was building some outfits because I would spend, you know, 13, 14, 15 hours at a time inside of the store and I would never get kicked out for it closing. And that's something that's true. Even if you reach a point that's after hours, if you're still in the store, you'll still be able to buy, sell, and customize stuff. It's only once you leave the store that it will become closed and you won't be able to re-enter. So again, this is nice if you're working on outfits, if you're you know, going on a shopping or a spending spree or whatever the case is, there's never gonna be a point in time where the shopkeeper will literally kick you out. You'll always be able to buy uh, item, sell, customize, uh, that sort of stuff. Now, building off of that, know that not all stores are going to have the same items. Like, for example, there are items in the Rhodes General Store that the Saint Denis Tailor does not, which is kind of interesting. So the Rhodes General Store has some clothing options that you won't find at something like the Saint Denis Tailor. Now, another thing to note is places like the Saint Denis Tailor, but also the Rhodes General Store also have areas in which you can modify your outfits. You just simply go to one of the back rooms and then you hold down Y or triangle and it will allow you to access your wardrobe. So keep that in mind, just because one store has something doesn't mean another will. So that's something you wanna keep in mind when shopping. Something else that's kind of interesting, if you antagonize your gang a lot, which is the negative response option, you're actually gonna get knocked out by a ga another gang member. I thought this was pretty funny. So basically the game doesn't let you be a jerk, at least for a long period of time. And I felt bad because I didn't wanna be a jerk to any of these people, but for the sake of this video, I wanted to show you what actually happens and yes, if you antagonize enough, I actually got sucker punched by Javier Escuela. And then you wake up, I think like a couple minutes or maybe like an hour later, just outside the camp. And then everything returns to normal. But I did think that was a funny feature that you can't be a jerk. And if you antagonize too much, you will get knocked out. If you find yourself hunting, but don't necessarily have any bait or maybe struggling to catch an animal, you can actually use a smaller animal's body as bait. So for example here, I accidentally ran over this rabbit when I was riding on my horse. That happens a lot. And what I did is you can actually take the carcass of the rabbit 
and you can put it in an area where other animals might be gathering or where you suspect another animal to be. And they will actually become attracted if they are a uh, carnivore to the animal carcass. So that's one way in which you can more easily hunt animals or if you're having trouble hunting animals, you might want to try using another animal that you've either hunted or, in my case, accidentally ran over as bait. It might end up working pretty well for you. This is something I really wish I knew about on day one. Stage coaches are never closed. So if we take a look at the mini map right now, you'll see that the stage coach icon is closed. However, everything else is open and you might be asking yourself, why is that the case? Why is the stage uh, coach closed? And even when we get into the city, you can see when we remain on our horse, it's closed, but everything else is open. What's going on here? Well, this is just a weird quirk that Rockstar does. The stage coach will only say that it's available when you're in close proximity, not on your horse. The only other time it won't be available is if you have a bounty on you and then you have to pay that off in order for it to become available. But other than that, and outside of that, the stagecoach is something that will always be open. Nothing in the game can close it. This next tip is useful if you're just getting started sort of learning the weaponry. There's a lot of guns in game that have to be manually cocked back or pumped. And in order to do this, you either have to let go of the left trigger, or you're gonna have to hit right trigger again. This is something that got me on multiple occasions in the beginning of the game. So now I either have a habit of after I fire hitting right trigger again, or I will aim and aim out and that will automatically recock or rearm the weapon. This happens a lot with the revolvers, the uh, repeaters. Uh, this also happens a lot with shotguns too if you have to physically pump the shell in. So that's something to keep in mind too that you know, unlike an automatic weapon, it's not sometimes going to load itself. If you ever happen to get arrested in game or find yourself in jail, depending on the severity of your crime, the gang will actually break you out. And you will get this pretty cool cutscene where Dutch or one of the other members of the gang will literally blow a hole in the side of the jail and actually bail you out. This is really cool. And it sort of goes to show you the level of immersion that Rockstar has put into this game. So that right there is pretty cool. If you want to test this out for yourself, what you can do is just antagonize a sheriff's deputy, get like a $15 bounty, and then you can surrender and go to jail. So if you're looking to see that happen, that's an easy way in which you can do that. A lot of you guys have been asking me about this. What happens when an item is flashing on the ground? Well, that means that item is actually saved to one of your inventory or outfit slots. So for example here, we're gonna swap hats with this farmer, and when I pick up the hat, you can see that Arthur's hat, which is saved to my summer gunslinger outfit, starts glowing on the ground. That's because it's saved to a specific outfit, whereas the hat I picked up on the ground cannot be saved to a specific outfit. So that's actually something that's really nice if you're looking for gear or your hat fell off in an area where there's a lot of other items, you'll easily be able to find it because it will be the one glowing. Same with weapons and same with other accessories that can be dropped in the world. They will always be glowing if they're saved to your horse or if they're saved to an outfit. Moving on, if you're ever hunting out in the wild and you become poisoned by a snake, your health core drains from full to empty in 10 minutes. Now you can actually cure this with various herbs like ginseng, English mace, milkweed, vanilla flower, or yarrow, or you can fix this by sleeping, returning to camp, or starting a mission. This happened to me the other day and I was so scared that Arthur was just gonna like drop dead in the middle of the woods. Uh, I didn't know what to do so I just started like consuming all the gold items I had in my inventory. Hopefully that worked, I'm still alive so it, it didn't look like it did anything all that bad. Up next, let's talk about the degradation process and weapon management. So there's actually three different hidden parameters that determine weapon deterioration. The first is soot. So shooting the weapon will cause it to slowly degrade and a weapon will go from best condition to worst condition after being fired a certain number of times. The second is rust. Rust appears when the weapon is submerged in water or deep snow and it will take a set number of seconds for a weapon exposed to water to go from best condition to worst condition. And the third is dirt. Dirt stains a weapon when it is submerged in deep mud, even when holstered, and it will take a set number of seconds for a weapon to be exposed in mud to go from best 
to worst. Now, degradation has the following effects on your weapon. It will cause the weapon damage to be reduced, the fire rate to be reduced, the weapon's cocking speed is slowed down, and the time it takes to reload will be increased. Now, the best way to slow degradation is to usually store your preferred weapons on your horse when you need to spend an extended time in proximity to mud, snow, or water. And if there is no real danger of attack when you are engaged in activities, that will directly affect weapon condition, such as swimming to reach a collectible. Another thing that's worth mentioning is worn weapons. You might see these in the world. So if you pick up a firearm dropped by an enemy, you might notice that it has the worn prefix in front of it. Worn weapons are long past their mechanical prime, and so you can actually not fully restore them. Manually cleaning will refill the bar to the capped limit, but there is no way to go beyond that point. So I'm sure you guys knew this by now, but worn weapons are definitely the ones you do not want to go for. Now, something you might not have known about barrel rifling, it actually has a unique impact on shotguns. So when used on shotguns uh, with buckshot ammo equipped, spread is going to be increased, leading to a wider cone of fire, but therefore lowering accuracy. So even though it says it increases accuracy, it's technically going to be lowered. Your just cone of fire is going to be increased. So that's an interesting thing regarding shotguns and upgrading them at the gunsmith. A lot of you guys have been asking me how cheats work in this game and why when you enter them, they sometimes don't work. Well, that's because oftentimes you will have to find cheat codes in newspapers. So that's why it's important to find newspapers and you'll also find them scattered throughout the world. Like they might be scribbled on a rock or a frozen lake. So you have to actually see the cheat codes in game before Rockstar will allow you to enter them in the start menu. I thought that that was kind of interesting. And if you're wondering why you can't create some of your favorite items in game, well, it's because you're gonna need a pamphlet for it first. So for example, you might need a pamphlet for a type of ammo or a health cure. And oftentimes you can find those scattered throughout the world or you can buy them at a fence. But anyways, that right there is 15 things I wish I knew before I started playing Red Dead Redemption 2. Some great tips and tricks for a beginner's guide. And hopefully you veterans can pick up a, a thing or two that you might not have known. Anyways, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Do you have any other tips or tricks that you'd like to share with us today? Let us know down there. If you did go on to enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way, guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.